Hello, good evening. It is the last working day of the week, and this is the late edition of Metro News. We are coming to you live from our studios here in Laboni Accra. My name is Kwasi Afri. Let's have a look now at the top stories for tonight's bulletin. Electoral Commission assures of a worked out plan being embarked upon to mitigate operator and adjudication errors in the voter register. Smaller political parties remain divided over whether or not there should be a new voters register. Member of Parliament divided on allocation of confiscated machinery as the House considers the new Minerals and Mines Amendment Bill 2014. And the U.S. to deploy special operations forces to Syria to advise rebels. Well, in the details of the bulletin tonight, managing editor of the Daily Dispatch newspaper, Benefson, is against calls by the opposition New Patriotic Party for a new voters register. In his submission, Mr. Refson maintained that there should be proper auditing of the current register first, since there is no guarantee that there will not be any more underage voting when a new voters register is opened. And I felt that having been associated, having been associated with elections for close to 23 years with my colleagues across the political spectrum, there are some issues that I think as a country we need to observe. There are two positions and I think that I'm hoping that by the end of the two day, my contribution will help for us to find a middle way. The first issue of, I don't believe that the voters register is bloated, but I think that's a problem that we need to address. The first issue of bloated, the register being bloated came about when persons who want to sue their argument take the 2000 census figure of those above 18 years being 51 percent plus then they take the 2010 census figure of our population being 25 million divide it roughly into two to get 12.5 million people and they take the 2012 voter census a uh, voter 12 uh, voter population of a little over 14 million so the angle was the voters register is bloated by 1.5 million people. If you take the 2010 census, those above 18 years have shifted from 51 point something percent to 50. Well, so just at the same forum where Ben Efson was speaking, Chairperson of the Electoral Commission of Ghana, Charlotte Osai, also gave a brief background of the state of voting in Ghana exhibiting clearly that they have been aware of some of the stated problems over the period, including overvoting, minors among others. Now, she, however, says there has been a worked out plan which is being embarked upon to mitigate some of these operators and adjudication errors. Mr. Chair, a voter registration system basically establishes the eligibility of individuals to cast a ballot in an election or a referendum. And for an electoral management body such as the Electoral Commission of Ghana, it serves two main functions. It verifies voter eligibility and it controls the legitimacy of the balloting process. I think a lot of the discussions we've had so far have dealt with the legitimacy of the process and all that. But the register also helps the EMB ensure efficiency on election day. So if you do not know the number of voters you have on your roll, you cannot anticipate the waiting periods at polling stations. You cannot 
prepare adequately in terms of how many ballots should you print and all that. It also helps us support voter education because you know the public you're dealing with and how to reach them. And the political parties also use the, the voters register to help their campaign and candidates need to know who they should be speaking to. Our view is that register certain features. It must be complete. It must have only the details of the voters as required by law. It must be current. It must be regularly updated so that all qualified persons who have not been previously captured have the opportunity to be captured because you really do not want to disenfranchise any members of the electorate. It must be accurate. It must be well maintained and have limited or zero errors in the data. It must be inclusive. All tribes, persons with disabilities, prisoners, um, whether you're a house owner or not, as our history shows, you should be on the register. It must be more inclusive than where we started from. But it must also be exclusive. It must exclude all unqualified groups. I think we've heard a lot on underage voters, non-nationals, and um, we have conveniently left out persons of unsound mind, which may actually be the largest category so far. Well, so we stay with the voter registers discussion, and the General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party has welcomed the Electoral Commission's acceptance of some forms of irregularities in the voter register. After taking a swipe at the EC on who can have access to Togo's National Voter Register, Governor Japan said they are making a headway with the EC's acceptance. But members of the ruling party, NDC, however, think their position on cleaning the register rather than full replacement will succeed. So much I to be the head of the Association of Electoral Commissions in Africa. So it should be very easy for you to get that from, from Togo. And then also you ask that we should produce for you the, we should produce for you I think one of the constituencies that we mentioned that we believe the register has been tampered with. You have legal custody of all the registers. So that should be a request that you can satisfy yourself. Is that? The country deserves a credible electoral process. And the foundation of that electoral process is a credible register, quite clearly. Um, the, the proposals we sent to the Electoral Commission in August, uh, which, I mean, surprisingly, this is the first day that they are giving us anything remotely close to a response, is it, well grounded. They've accepted that there are issues. And they are putting it down to human error, but what it confirms is we were speaking on serious grounds and that we expect them to take the thing seriously, take a critical look at it, and time is of essence. I see that they are trying to use time and money. It's beginning to be the excuse. When we talk of a voter register losing integrity, there are two key ingredients that we look at. One, whether it uh, 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 lends itself to impersonation, and two, whether there are records of uh, double voting. If these two ingredients are zero, which appears to be the case in Ghana. There hasn't been any recorded case of impersonation or uh, double voting for that matter. Uh, it does not uh, 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 affect the credibility of the register. It is about consensus building, it's about meeting of minds and between this and today you know that the consensus has built heavily in favor of you know looking at the register uh, in other ways, as opposed to the N N N MPP's belligerent and non-negotiable position of a new voters register at all costs. We cannot just say that EC has made this presentation, so it's enough to say that we shouldn't have. Indeed, EC has not even told us the way forward. They have just outlined the challenges they are facing and some of the responses they can give. But the EC has not told us whether they will be comfortable with audit, new register, or the status quo? Maybe it's good they started to make their noise. As cacophonous as, as it was, it has brought us to this, to this forum where now we are really fleshing out the issues for the greater and deeper understanding of Ghanaians and the electorate. And so I think that 
it's, 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 it's worthwhile and it's useful after all. Look, um, what we want is to make sure that we rebuild confidence of the Ghanaian people in the electoral process. Uh, we, we are not going to be standing here and saying that what we feel should be it. We have made our point very clear that it's better to have something fresh than to try and fidget with what you have. And the banter goes on as the issues are being centered on the credibility of the voters register. And also former First Lady Nana Konedu Ajman Rollins has told Metro News that the credibility again of the current voters register is questionable, citing some of the shortcomings of the biometric voting in 2012. She however says critical consideration must be given to suggested opinion polls by all stakeholders before a final position is adopted. Position of my party, that is the NDP, is that we should look at all the issues that are being brought uh, to the table and uh, take an informed position on it. People should not take a position against or for without looking at the circumstances and the issues on the table. And the other position that we have is that there are speculations that certain areas, you know, the, the, the pictures were scanned. You see, once that comes in, it puts a big question mark on the authenticity of the voters register because nobody's picture is supposed to be uh, scanned onto it. The picture is supposed to come biometrically. So that puts a question mark. It doesn't make it um, a credible thing anymore. Let's look at the two sides. We are not interested in what NDC is saying or what MPP is saying. We are interested in the credibility of the elect um, electoral uh, document, and we are also interested in the, the country Ghana. What's going to become of us? That's what we are asking for. Well, we do have more stories coming up. Please don't go away. This is the late edition on Metro News. Well, you welcome back from the break. This is the late edition of Metro News. Now, Member of Parliament were today divided on the issue of allocating confiscated machinery to a private individual or not, as the House considered the new Minerals and Mines Amendment Bill 2014. The bill, which is currently at the consideration stage, seeks to address the problems associated with illegal mining in the country. Galamse operations have ravaged Ghana for years. Government, in a desperate effort, set up a task force to deal with the problem in the short term. However, 
The Minerals and Mines Amendment Bill 2014 is expected to provide a long-term solution to the problem of illegal mining. You find that when you go to Egalamse site, those you find in the pit, in the in the in the in the holes digging for gold are ordinary boys and girls, mostly boys. They don't have any money. They are paid daily. There are some other people somewhere who have millions of dollars who buy expensive machines and then they send the machines to the site and then get the boys to operate the machines and to help wash the gold and blah blah blah. And then they pay the boys on a daily wage. Now, if we get our hands on those machines, the machines disappear. What do you think will happen? A key part of the law is the confiscation of equipment which has been used for this illegal act. Under the new law, the minister responsible for mines is enjoined to allocate to a state institution any equipment or products seized, while the majority in parliament argues that this must be expanded to include private individuals, the minority is worried that this will be subject to massive abuse. There is no minister who would bypass the state institution and give to a private person if there is a state institution that is interested. Number one. Number two. Number two, Mr. Speaker, I don't want to say that let us just take the state out and say that appropriate institution. It could be, please, there will be a lot of equipment scattered around our mind. Nobody wants it. And yet, because of this law, you can't allocate, you can't sell, you can't auction. Need cars. Cars. All the time. No, please, listen carefully. We auction cars to individuals when we know they need cars. Does that make sense to us? So that is second. We want to deter the same scrupulous or scrupulous individuals from turning around to go and buy this equipment. That is the thing we want to do. So don't give any room, any possibility for any unscrupulous person to have the opportunity to go back and buy the equipment. After hours of debate, the House agreed that instead of 30 days, the minister in charge of mines must publish the names of state institutions that may benefit from confiscated equipment within 60 days. The House, however, maintained that confiscated equipment must only be allocated to state institutions. The House resumes on Tuesday, 2nd November. The Member of Parliament for North Town has reassured aggrieved workers of the Volta Star Textiles Company Limited who have not been paid for the past nine months of government's plan to restructure the company into a self-sustaining entity. Now, according to Samuel Okujetu Ablak, our plans are far advanced to put in a payment system to clear salary arrears of the workers. The revived Volta Star Textiles Limited may soon be shut down because workers at the factory have laid down their tools in demand for better condition of service and delayed payment of salaries. Some few months ago, Member of Parliament for North Tong had to intervene in the payment of the company's electricity bills. That notwithstanding, the operations of the company continue to suffer. Speaking to the MP in whose constituency the company is located, Samuel Okujetu Ablakwa disclosed to Metro News government plan to restructure the company. What the trade minister is saying is that they want the workers to agree to a payment plan where they will pay them for October, pay them for November, pay them for December. But from January uh, to October, when they receive their salary every month, there will be a 10 month, 10 month of the arrears, 10 month of the nine, 10%, 10 percent of the nine month arrears will be added to their salary over a 10 month period so that they will pay, they'll clear their, their arrears. That is a proposal which the trade ministry has put before the workers. Volta Star Textiles Limited, then in the 70s, 80s and early 90s, was one of the leading textile producers in Ghana and West Africa. But today, it is facing stiff competition from cheap textile imports. Speaking long term, we all need to appreciate the fact that there's a need for uh, some kind of uh, uh, a public-private partnership where we bring in investors. And I'm happy that the Ministry of Trade and Industry has commissioned PricewaterhouseCoopers as transaction advisors to advise government on how to uh, get the right investor to come and support the, uh, 
the resuscitation and the expansion of the Volta Star Textile Limited. The North Tong MP also gave the assurance that government will not under any circumstance allow Volta Star Textiles to collapse. I think that we, there's, a, there's a need for a national strategy which will eventually help Japan Textiles or Volta Star Textiles Limited survive. But the potential is huge and I, I, I do not and I cannot imagine that Volta Star Textile Limited will be closed down during my tenure as MP or we will lose that very, very important cash cow. It will, it will be such a big blow and I don't know where all these thousands of workers will go to and what they will do. Meanwhile, a delegation from the Trade and Industry Ministry is expected to meet with the management of Volta Star Textiles Limited on issues affecting their operations and to shore up government confidence in the company. Frank Nyonato, Metro News. And in a bid to instill the act of giving into its peoples, the Accra Richard School has held its annual harvest and outreach service to mobilize resources and funds to support the vulnerable in society. Now this year's harvest and outreach witnessed three institutions, Mampon Demonstration School for the Deaf, Shelter for Abused Children and the Ridge Hospital Children's Department benefiting. The 2015 Harvest and Outreach Service by the Reed Church School brought together hundreds of pupils, teachers and parents. This is a church school and so we practice everything that Jesus taught us to do. And one of the things is that we should visit the needy, the poor, the people who need support in the society. These are the things that so during this time this is what we do to help give to the needy. We select a few institutions in order to give them enough. The school managed to mobilize from them variety of resources running into thousands of cities to support the needy in society. Very elated and appreciative of this massive show of love from the children of Accra Richter School. Donations like this go a long way to make it easier for me to take care of those individual children who come to school without provisions. Some do not come to school with exercise books, textbooks. Some of the items include toiletries, detergents, foodstuff, water, blankets, and bed sheets. The beneficiary institutions were Mampon Demonstration School for the Deaf, Shelter for Abused Children, and the Ridge Hospital Children's Department. The service featured songs, recitals, and scripture readings by members of the school community and visiting institutions. This is Metro News. Let's do some business stories now. Businesses in Ghana have been encouraged to adopt effective strategies to maximize their growth. This, according to the head of external affairs of Vodafone, Gerhard Mensah, will ensure sustainability. Chartered Institute of Marketing Ghana was established to offer professional tuition in marketing to business individuals and organizations. Over the years, the Institute has produced world class marketing professionals and practitioners who are serving in various corporate bodies. At its two days annual marketing conference, stakeholders were schooled on the need to strategize in the ever-growing business market. The success of an organization can not only be measured in terms of its profitability, but it ought also to be measured in terms of how it has fared by means of managing its environmental footprint and also by means of how socially sustainable its activities um, have been. And so the triple bottom line refers to the need for organizations to, be, to conduct their operations in an economically sustainable way, in an environmentally sustainable way, and also in a socially sustainable way. A participant shared his view on the objective of corporate social responsibility. I think to a large extent, um, there are many big corporates who are still largely ignorant about the benefits to society and the benefits to themselves, you know, albeit their brand equity, um, um, and they don't just pay enough attention to it. I think the more of these that we hear, 
through events like this, I think the better educated a lot of people will be. The two-day event which saw participants from various markets and fields across the continent was on the theme, Strategize to Evolve or Die. Still in business, Power Minister is urging Ghanaians to brace themselves to pay for more electricity consumption if they want to enjoy an interrupted power supply. According to him, hydroelectric power generation is gradually fading out. That's the need for reinvestment in other energy resources. He was speaking at a short cutting ceremony for a 369 MVA bulk supply substation at Dawa by the Enclave Power Company. It is actually 396 MVA bulk supply substation. In line with strategies to bridge the energy deficit in the country's power generation, the Power Ministry reviewed its local content policy to attract investments from local industries. It is for this reason that Enclave Power Company, a privately owned Ghanaian company engaged in power and energy, is investing $80 million in the construction of a 396 MVA substation at Dawa. Currently, Enclave Power Company supplies electricity to over 60 industrial and commercial customers including world-renowned multinational blue-chip companies like Cargill and Barry Calico, which are two of the world's largest cocoa processing companies, and two of the largest steel mills in the country, namely United Steel Company and Ryder Steel Ghana Limited. Power Minister Dr. Kwabna Donko urged the general public to be conservative in power usage to complement government's efforts in solving the energy crisis. As the rule of Akosombo diminishes and we now have to have a lot more thermal complementation and the thermal plants currently generate at about 13, 14 cents per kilowatt hour, the mix makes the marginal cost of any additional megawatt higher and therefore if we are to sustain the industry then cost must be reflected in the price we pay for power. And when completed, the 25-year lifespan Dawa substation will be the largest substation in Ghana. <laughs> Happening on the international front now, and the U.S. President Barack Obama has planned to deploy special operation forces to Syria to advise rebels. Washington deems moderate U.S. sources have said on Friday a step he has long resisted to avoid getting dragged into another war in the Middle East. Obama was expected to send fewer than 60 special operation troops, said congressional sources who spoke on condition of anonymity. One U.S. official said the number was likely to be in the range of 20 to 30, but could not provide details. U.S. officials stressed the forces were not meant to engage in frontline combat, but rather to advise and assist moderate rebels. One official said their key role would be logistical to ensure that weapons and other supplies are delivered to the moderate forces whom the United States supports. Well so, that's edition. well, so that's all about it for this evening's edition of Late News. My name is Kwasi Afriye. Thank you very much for watching. Good night.